Okay, so we've revealed um, that we're sisters, and so this is a very um, personal and emotional show for me. Um, and um, yeah, we want to share it with you. So um, we're going to just carry on with the questions um, to, to Jeanette. So, okay. Right. Gee. Okay. This, yeah, we just want to talk about, you know, the Massachusetts um, press took an um, interest in your story. Okay. Do you want to kind of go into that and really explain what happened to you two years ago? All right. So, um, hi, everyone. Um, two years ago, um, it was, let me think, probably February time. Um, I'd just gone back to work from maternity leave. And I remember um, waking up literally on the bathroom floor at work. Some of my colleagues actually found me on the floor. And um, they, I, I guess I passed out. But I'd been feeling pretty numb um, from the neck down for quite a while. And I'd been to my GP and I explained that I had really severe numbness from the neck down and mainly on my left side but my GP just said you've just had a baby um, six months ago um, go and do Pilates and yoga and I said to her on three different occasions if I could feel like my body properly from the neck down of course I would do Pilates and yoga I would try anything but I can't feel anything and so I asked her to refer me to like a private MRI scan and she said no scan could tell you um, what's wrong with you. I've done all the tests, there's nothing wrong with you. So I went into my workplace and they had a private GP, so I paid 40 pounds. And this private GP referred me straight away to a neurologist. And I went to the neurologist and he just said, I don't want to scare you, but I need you to go for an MRI scan right now because if it's what I suspect it is, you need to know now. So I went for the scan and the following day, I went back at about five o'clock in the evening, and the neurologist just sat me down, and he said, if I say to you, multiple sclerosis, what does that mean to you? So I said to him, oh yeah, there was a teacher at school. She had MS, she had wa a walking stick, she was teaching us office practice, oh, I couldn't stand it, office practice. And then I paused, and I said, are you saying I've got multiple sclerosis? And he nodded his head, and he said, "Yes, how that's exactly what I'm saying." Sorry, Steve. How did you feel when you when you heard that? You know, I was going through your mind. I was totally shocked. Um, I was devastated. And right there and then, in the room, I took out my mobile and I texted everybody in my phone book, and the text message just read, "Oh my God, I've got multiple sclerosis." Mm. Just another minute. Just the shock, that. really. So, sis, once you'd had the initial shock, you've received the initial shock. What? Once you received the initial shock, um, what was the next thing? What you know? What happened at home? Um, well, before I even left the neurologist, um, he'd offered me steroids. Um, at the time, I I couldn't like uh, do up my buttons. Um, or put my put any shoes on that couldn't just like slip on my feet. So he said, if you take these five steroids, it will probably shorten the relapse. And he said, I should come in the following week with maybe members of my family, so we can discuss various treatments. But you know, these steroids um, should help. And I'd always been weary hearing people talking about steroids, but I was in so much pain and. I was in so much shock at hearing the word multiple sclerosis that I took the, I actually took the steroids. Even though it was something you in the past would not yeah. consider. I yeah. felt so desperate and, mm -hmm. you know, I had a new baby. Mm -hmm. I've already got an 11 year old daughter. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. just felt, you know, I, ha I have to do something. I've mm -hmm. got to try. I can't like mm -hmm. be disabled. You know, I can't get any worse. So yeah, I went home and, um, my husband being the strong man that he was, he was just like, babe, this is not for you, man. You, you know, you're gonna get through it. Like, he was just like, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. But I had no faith. I just thought, this is it. I'm, I've got multiple sclerosis and 
you know, they told me that it's going to get worse. So, yeah, I, I was just scared. And that's where you were, at a very, very low point. Yeah. Uh, probably the lowest that you've ever been in your life. Totally. Mm -hmm. Lowest point of my life. Um, just couldn't see any light. I mean, especially that very first day. It was mm. just raw mm. and a shock. Um, yeah, total yeah. shock. Yeah. So you and um, your husband, Ignatius, decided that you were going to, you were not going to accept this situation. You were not going to just take it. You were going to, you were going to, you were going to deal it. You were going to get the better of it. Um, Even though you were, you was, that you, he was propping you up at I that think time. my husband totally decided mm -hmm. that, you know, it, he's normally known me to be a very strong person, strong willed and mm -hmm. determined. Mm -hmm. But I really had no faith at all. Mm -hmm. I, even now when I look back, I don't even feel like it was me mm -hmm. going through that mm -hmm. because I was so low. And anyone who knows me knows that I'm a very positive person. I always see light Absolutely. at the end of the tunnel. But yes, I can verify that. It totally... Yeah rocked my core mm -hmm. you know to not to not have any feeling in your body apart from severe pain I can't even explain it just constant stabbing pain I can't explain it and then to add to the pain you're unable to move I can't I can't even looking back I cannot believe that I'm here today I can't believe that I'm here and alive. I can tell you um, audience that she is in very good health very vibrant, <laughs> looking fantastic. Um, so, you know, so Jeanette, okay, you obviously got that terrible news. We all got that news because you obviously shared it with us, your family. And, you know, we, we didn't know what to do either. So, but obviously things started to change. What, start, what was the first thing? What, when um, did you get that little, that little mustard seed of faith to say, you know what, I'm gonna start doing something, even just taking that first step? <laughs> Um, I remember, I think it was maybe two or three weeks down the line. No, in fact, maybe it was two months down the line. Mm -hmm. My right side, mm -hmm. the feeling was coming back pretty strong. Mm. So it was just the left side that I had to sort of drag around with me because I, I just didn't have feeling uh, and I was just tired, sleeping all the time. So the fatigue was just... Jeanette, Jay, I just want to interject. She was actually paralysed on one side. Yeah. The one side was not working at all. My left side was just... For three months. Yeah. So, sorry, go on. So it was, you know, it was very severe. But um, I remember I started to go swimming. So I couldn't actually swim because the left side was really bad, but I would just float. Um, and I, I really then started just thinking... Because when I have children, I actually don't go into labor. So I've never felt labor pain. So I, I had nothing to compare this pain with. So people always get shocked when I say, oh, I've had two children, but I've never experienced labor. I don't take any kind of medication or what have you. But um, I had nothing to compare it to. But this pain was severe. And then I started just floating in the water. And I started praying. I started saying, like, God, if you can make me go through childbirth twice, and not experience any pain, like, why? What, what, what's supposed to come out of this? Like, you know, am I supposed to just stay here and suffer? Like, you know, what is supposed to happen to me? And um, I really just started thinking, if the right side is coming back, maybe, maybe. But I went to the neurologist and they said, look, you know, <laughs> this is probably gonna be another relapse. You know, you get a bit better and it's probably gonna get a bit worse. So don't get too excited and so with that, I thought, wow. And everybody I knew, they would get a bit better and then they would relapse. And I started meeting more and more people with MS and they would just say to me, you know, like, how they're happy even though they're in that condition. And I was so sad that I only actually said to my husband recently that I actually just prayed to God and said, please just take my life. You know, I can't bear to see my children. And sometimes it was double vision, so I couldn't really see them. I couldn't really feel like I wanted to hold them. I, di I didn't feel like I could be a wife anymore. I didn't feel like I could be a mother. You know, and my mum's always been there for me. Even when she's been sick, she's always been like, if I'm ill, she's still there. And knowing that physically I couldn't do just made me realise how inadequate I felt. And it was the worst time of my life. I've never felt so low. And it was just literally, um, after I'd had my son, there was this website that I saw about um, 
if you have a weak pelvic floor, uh, that there's this uh, thing that you could do, not like, I've, like I'd heard of pelvic floor exercises, but this thing you could do and it'd restore you and what have you. And with MS, I found that I had the weakest bladder, which is one of the things alongside fatigue. So sometimes I could be seated on the toilet for an hour because constantly I would just be weighing all the time. And it was just, it was awful. And I remember that I saw this website, it was like Mutu something, and I quickly looked for it. And I found this thing, I, I quickly phoned up the lady, her name's Wendy Powell, I phoned her up. And I said, I, I, need, a, I need one of your trainers to come and train me. I, I really, you know, I need help. I've got my awful sclerosis. Okay, Jo, at this point, how much use of your body did you have? How only, much, where were you right in side. your physiology? Only my right side. Still had, on, so still the left, only, was, okay. I was still dragging. Right. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I, I was still pretty much not able to use my left side. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I just started to think to myself, if the right side has come back, I've got to try. You know, I really want to be mobile again, and I'm just not used to being a dependent person. Mm -hmm. I'm used to being mm -hmm. so independent. So it's very hard to be dependent on my husband or, you know, like even going to the physiotherapy, they told me to go physio, and they basically just told me to accept that I'm gonna get worse. So they were offering me like a walking stick, and I'm thinking, hold on. I'm only 37 years of age and you're giving me a walking stick, you know, and I didn't want to claim that over mm. my life, mm. but at the same time I was kind of scared, like, do I take it, do I not, and so it just made me say, like, no, don't take mm -hmm. it, so I did have a lot of trips and falls, mm. which, mm. yeah, I guess if I took the walking stick, it could have been avoided, but I just couldn't bring myself to really say, like, MS is a part of my life. So that was your your faith, your, your strength starting to, you know... It was literally into. mustard seed faith. It was uh -huh. very... How can I put it? it I was so desperate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be well, mm -hmm. but at the same time, everybody I'd met who had MS, I'd go to the clinic. You know, I might see them one month, mm -hmm. and they walk in, and the following month, they'd be in a wheelchair. You know, so as much as I wanted to believe I could get better, mm -hmm. what I was seeing in front of me was that even if I slightly got better, I probably would have another relapse. So I started to kind of doubt. So outwardly, there wasn't anything that you saw no, with other patients see. that made you feel hopeful. No. So you had to just really rely on your own internal. Yeah, and just the fact that, you know, my husband was really saying, you know, like, we can do so much, you know, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. try, you know, just be the strong person that you are, mm -hmm. pray, you mm -hmm. know, and just focus. But, you know, at the time, I was praying, but I just, I was more questioning as well, which right, is like, right. why? Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, I couldn't, I just mm -hmm. could not work out what I was going to get or what kind of testimony I could give from saying that I'm in pain, mm -hmm. I'm disabled, you know, and I just didn't feel happy, I didn't feel happy at all. So that was very hard. So from there, you started your journey back to health through physical? Um, well... I found it, I, I was so down, mm -hmm. and normally when I get down, anyone who knows me, I'm thinking, give me cake, give me lots of food. Mm. Um, <laughs> so I was already overweight by like, over four stone, I was already overweight by about, yeah, just over four stone. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, being immobile, I'm getting heavier, mm -hmm bigger, you know. It Not to mention the medication and as well, yeah. I'd just taken though, the first week I'd taken the steroids and I just literally, I looked like I exploded. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I wasn't helping myself either way because mm. I was eating really badly. Um, but I was, you know, I was, I was just depressed and I was like, well, you know, when I normally get upset, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, give me cake, give me whatever kind of comfort food. But on this particular day, I thought, no, I'm actually going to fast from like, I don't know, I think it was like six o'clock in the morning till six. And then I just started having tea. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really depressed. I was just like, what am I going to do if I don't get better? And um, I just changed my diet. I mean, I, I come from a West Indian home. So like, you know, we have a lot of like fried dumplings or rice and peas or and chicken. And ju I just literally, I 
joined up with this Mutu system and the lady just said, eat real food. And I was thinking, what are you talking about? Eat, eat real, real food. Real food did yeah. you say? Okay. I thought, what do you mean, eat real food? I was like, I do eat real food. What, what's wrong with the chicken? What's wrong with <laughs> the rice and peas? Well, you know, I, I just thought it is real food. Mm. I, I do have vegetables, but it's a side thing. Um, yeah, so I was pretty much like, what? And then I started to look at what I started to eat. And I thought, okay, well, I'm, I'm not helping myself. I'm disabled, I'm overweight, I'm fat, and I'm losing my sight as well. And I was twitching. It was really weird. It was like, say I was somewhere, I would start twitching, and my eye would start twitching, and I just felt awful. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I started eating, like, just, say, roast chicken, but a whole load of vegetables. Um, started eating my fruits more gave up drinking tea and all the coffee mm. and I just started drinking herbal tea. So like my favorite even now is like ginger tea. Mm. So mm. I'll have that. And I had really bad fatigue. I was always sleeping. I just found with the MS and they said to me, you know, that's one of the things they mm. said, when you feel tired, you have to sleep. So just sleep. And I thought, how can we run our home with me just sleeping? Because this was all that so opposite to your life. Totally before. opposite. And mm. I, like, you know, the thing is, I had to see like my husband doing both of our roles and at the same time I had to, you know he's there for me mm. but I'm looking and thinking this is madness look at me I'm just sitting here and you know all those days I'm just eating rubbish and I'm thinking I'm not helping so if imagine if he has to carry me he's got to carry this big hefty woman so I'm not helping you know imagine somebody having to do all the housework while you just sit or so you just lay there. So, sis, this affected your self-esteem as well as I everything else. I was at yeah. the worst point in my life. I mean, even my friends that I told I had MS, I didn't tell them, like, how bad I was mm, because mm. I wanted them to talk to me mm. or, like, when we always exchanged text messages, I wanted them to just be the same. Mm. So I was trying to crack jokes, but none of them saw me. None of them actually saw me disabled. None of my family, apart yeah, from my she, husband. She wouldn't allow any of us to come and see her. I couldn't deal with anybody seeing me in that predicament and I just thought you know people are used to me wearing my high heeled shoes yeah, you inches. know just I don't know five inches tall shoes and I couldn't even put them on much less you know I, I couldn't do anything so it was it was the worst time mm -hmm. and you know it was a real struggle so I thought okay so maybe I've seen everybody else really suffering and Maybe this is going to mm. be with me. Maybe I won't have a, you know, get past it. Maybe I will be one of those people that keep relapsing. But I've got to try and, you know, just eat healthy. Maybe if I can just feel a bit better. Mm. And um, so, what happened with the diet? What What was the first sign of changes that you you noticed? Um, I guess the first set of changes really was that um, I, I started losing weight. And in ten years of being overweight, I'd never lost any weight. I mean, like really, I've never lost the baby fat in 10 years. So I changed my diet. So imagine not, I wasn't walking because I couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very like, it was very hard to um, think that I could participate in any form of exercise. But like I say, you know, I was gradually, mm. you know, so my right side was back, but the left was really weak. Right. But then, that started motivating me. Mm. My faith started to grow and I started mm. thinking, all right, well, even if I do relapse, I need to enjoy this moment where I can actually move. So mm. even, you know, the, the left side was really weak mm -hmm. and I had to just drag it, but yeah. I was just continuing, you know. And like I said, the Mutu exercises, they were very, very basic. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they had like these very easy levels. So it was like I wasn't really moving mm -hmm. at all. It was mm -hmm. just very, very simple. Mm -hmm. And what really I needed to change at the time, what really affected me, not just the pain, but was the fact that I was incontinent. So I just constantly, you know, when they said to me, oh, you, you, you're going to have to have a catheter bag. I mean, I, what, sis, what was that like? I can just only imagine I was knowing you as I do and just know, just thinking about I, you know, a young woman with, in that situation. I cried and I cried. I don't remember if I even told my husband because I just thought, how's he going to look at me like you know knowing that you know like you know if this is the person that you love and mm -hmm. you know I just thought how's he going to look at me when he realizes that now I'm going to have a catheter bag 24 7 that we're going to be changing I, you know I couldn't even 
accept it. So yeah, I, I started these exercises, but to be honest with you, they were so, all right, they, they appear to be so easy that I said, this is stupid. Why am I wasting my time? Why have I even wasted money on this thing that is so simple? Like, believe me, when, when I watched the video and she said, like, do one of the exercises mm. and do this other one, I thought, this is not doing anything. And mm. I thought, I might as well just join Weight Watchers and threw my money down the pan knowing that I'm still gonna go out and buy cake and whatever. But like I said, I was so desperate mm -hmm. that I stuck with these basic Movements. pelvic floor exercises that's in the Mutu package. But most of these people that have joined the Mutu is because they wanna get slim, mm -hmm. that you know, they, they've been able to lose weight, but mm -hmm. they just can't lose the pregnant um, mm -hmm. belly that mm -hmm. they've got, so it's just the belly's bulging all the time, but they're probably slim all over. Mm -hmm. Whereas I was this fat person who's got MS, mm -hmm. all I wanna do is not have a catheter bag fitted. So mm -hmm. at this point, I'm not even thinking if I'm overweight, I'm what just like, like, please yeah. God, stop me from having this catheter bag installed. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it was like, I did the exercises for about uh, a month, I think. And I realized sort of, I could g like, cause it started building up. Okay. okay. So like maybe an hour, I could go a whole hour without having to use the toilet and then an hour, 15 minutes, I started so to write it down saying, oh my God, it's working, so it's working. So you were logging the, the, yeah. the little changes yeah. that were taking place. And on top fantastic. of that, what really shocked me was mm -hmm. I, had, I had to keep going every week to the incontinence clinic mm -hmm. because they were deciding whether to inst like give me mm -hmm. this catheter bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I went, it, you should have heard the woman. The woman said, she goes, what are you doing? I was like, why? She goes, I feel it. I was like, what? She goes, oh. you can control it. I was like, what? And she said, you've done it. You've done it, so you don't need it. When I tell you, I actually wrote on the Facebook no page of the Mutu, like saying, I can't believe it. I don't need the catheter bag. And everybody was happy for me, but yeah. I was so yeah. relieved, even though mm -hmm. I was still in pain mm -hmm. with MS. It was just at least that's one less thing to worry that about. I have to worry yes. about. You yes. know, it was like, it was like this light mm -hmm. at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel that way when I started because the exercises, they just appear to be too, you know, like sometimes- It just seemed like you was doing nothing. Is that what you, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know, like sometimes if someone says to you, if something seems too good to be true, mm -hmm. then it really is too good to be true. And that's how mm -hmm. I felt, to be honest. And so the faith was so tiny, but it was when I saw that result, mm -hmm. To somebody else, that'll probably be really little, but mm. for me, that was like, yes. Mm. And I just, I had to email the lady, Wendy Powell, and say to her, thank you so much. You don't know what you've done for me. And I, I you know, I started to sit down and started to say, you know, maybe mm -hmm. that's what I'm supposed to learn from this, to be a bit more grateful. Maybe I've never been that really grateful person uh, before. So gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude. You know, I didn't, mm. I'm saying now, I, Everything I do, mm -hmm. I try and look for the positive. Brilliant. Everything that happens to me, even though some of those things are negative, yeah. I just look at it and say, what am I supposed look to learn? Look for the positive. What am I supposed yes. to learn? And I know other people probably look at me and be like, just because she's been through MS, now everybody thinks like she's grateful, but you really don't know mm. how much you appreciate your body until you Absolutely. go through something like that. Absolutely. Because you know, like through every time we have a family event mm. for the last 10 years, if our mum says, come round for dinner, yeah, you know, do I turn family. up? No, <laughs> I find any excuse not to show up. Or I turn up really, really late when, when everybody else is gone. gone home. <laughs> because I just thought, why am I turning up to eat more food when everyone can clearly see that I'm overweight? Mm. And then you're gonna go and somebody's gonna come out with, but you put down weird. <laughs> like I don't know, like I'm not buying the clothes. Mm, mm. So yeah, I, you know, it really did change my life in that aspect that now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I'm the slimmest person. Mm. I've still got like two stone to lose, mm. but my thighs, they work. I can actually walk. So I love them. It's about, and, yeah, you know, it's being like, grateful for yeah. what you've got and who Whereas you Whereas before Absolutely. I used to be standing in the mirror saying, my putting God, your, putting look at the fat down. leg mm. and I want to hide. Mm. But I didn't appreciate the fact that I could walk. But the moment I couldn't walk, mm. you realize I was it, like, yeah. you know what, God, if only you can just make me mobile again. Mm. If, if you just make me mobile, I'll walk, you know, mm. I'll, I'll, I will park the car and, and I'll walk somewhere, mm, mm. you know, and that, that's how I started to feel like, yeah, yeah, I'll try this or I'll do that for me. 
once I started doing this Mutu, I actually lost um, three stones in about five months, I think mm -hmm, it was, mm -hmm. just by changing my diet mm -hmm. um, and doing just the basic pelvic floor. And then there was like one of the most basic things that I never knew mm. would even help is to do squats. That was the wow. first thing that she was teaching on the, on the program, to do squats. And I was thinking, how is that mm -hmm. going to help? Like, isn't squats for your leg and your bottom? Mm -hmm. Like, how is that going to help? Because the, the whole body is like a system, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So she whole, teaches you it's not that it's one. You yeah, don't separate it and mm -hmm. say, I need to do ab exercises mm -hmm. or I need... So I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really starting to learn. So you woke up your sleeping muscles. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Believe me, I met new muscles <laughs> <laughs> after that. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I was, honestly, it's... Multiple sclerosis was mm. probably the kick that I needed to start loving myself. Wow. to start appreciating myself mm. and to appreciate my life that I've got. You so know? that was, you know, that was a sort of, a bad, it started off as a bad situation, but inside that you found, you know, you found success. You found that you started to love you. Totally. And you started to take care of you. Yeah. Like, you know, as I was saying, um, I started to make lots of changes. So mm -hmm. from the moment I got a little bit of feeling, so I had... So still had severe pain mm -hmm. but I just didn't really focus too much on it I used to take I think there was um they gave me ibuprofen 500 milligrams I used to take like six of them in one that's six session. put six um, capsules that she's talking six just cap six yeah, tablets just so to six get times through. 500 yeah like just to get through I think maybe that might last for two hours maybe but I was going through so many a day, and then they get, I can't remember what the other one was called, another strong one. I can't remember what it's called, but I was taking both of them together mm -hmm. just to, knock out, the to pain. knock out the pain. And I remember saying like, no, now that I can walk, now that I can move, I said to my husband, I need you to find me uh, the self-defense that I've always wanted to do. Um, find me find me Krav Maga, find me Krav Maga. And my husband looked at me can like- you, Can you explain that to the people? This? So it's a, um, it's a Israeli martial art. So it's like street fighting. So um, anyway, my husband started searching, and I think this was, so I was diagnosed in the April, and this happened in October. He searched, um, Googled Krav Maga, and we found that a Krav Maga session was going on around the corner from wow. our house. <laughs> and I'd searched for years and never found so these Krav Maga local to us. They yeah. come at the right time. It was literally, they? we could just walk around the corner and go. And so I started training one-to-one -one mm -hmm. with um, the Krav Maga instructor. Mm -hmm. And he was so harsh. I mean, I thought he was gonna be like, you know, Gentle. Oh, <laughs> she's got multiple sclerosis and be really, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was like, let me see what you can do. And I was just really surprised. At this point, sis, where were you in your development? Where, how, how much movement were you having at this point? So I was able to move. Mm -hmm. I was able to walk. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I lost my balance. So I was, I was going to um, this uh, place where they teach you your cognitive skills or something oh, again. Because okay. I had to retrain Lina, my Lina brain those, yeah, yeah. how to hold things again. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. like my left side especially was so weak. Was so, weak. so I remember he said um, to try swimming. Um, no, um, skipping, that was it, to try wow. skipping. And I couldn't skip. I just couldn't, it was like I couldn't get the coordination. The coordination and yeah. It was so weird because I was always able to skip uh -huh. and that was one of the things I couldn't do. Wow. And just doing um, push-ups, I've never been able to do them anyway, mm -hmm. but I tried just doing the girly one, but mm -hmm. my left mm -hmm. arm would just lock. Mm -hmm. And so it, I realized, I was like, that was my challenge. I, I've got to learn to do this, I've got mm -hmm. to learn to do this. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, you know, we went through and I think we did like four sessions. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I was absolutely petrified of going to this class, but I was like, MS is not gonna beat me mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna stop coming to this class. So I paid him up front for the whole month. Mm -hmm. So I had to go. Mm -hmm. And every time I was going, I'd be standing that sofa, like, oh my God, Lord, why have I come here? Why have I come here? Why have I come here? And then I'd get in and I'd be like, right, I've got to go for it. And I remember the first time that I could do the press ups, I was so yeah. shocked just realizing wow that by doing the Mu Tu, I built up the strength in my body mm -hmm. and my core muscles, core muscles were getting very, so yeah. strong, yeah. which I'd never had before. Like, I've never been able to mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. press ups mm -hmm. ever in my life. Like, wow. not at age 21, not at, in the team, never. Wow. So I was so shocked. And then when I realized that I could do more repetitions of mm -hmm. 
press ups mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. squats. Mm-hmm. I started to feel really grateful. So like every time I would come home, as much as the tutor totally annoyed me because the class was so hard, and sometimes you bring in these guys to come and pressure test. They give you a pressure test to show that you've learned the technique. Oh, wow. So you'd have to fight with the guys. So they'd put on, say like they were trying to attack me. So they'd put on the technique and I'd have to show that I know the technique, how to get out and how to defend myself. Still going through the healing still process. Still going okay. through the healing process. Right. Still being in pain. Wow. Still having my arm left side totally okay. lock up and still being on heavily So you were doing this, uh, I can't even, I'm not even gonna pronounce it. You were Crap doing this with <laughs> Mech men, yeah. Tell them how tall you are, Fizz. <laughs> Five foot two. Wow. So very short. And these guys were some of them were massive. And you would hear my trainer saying, "Come on, if she doesn't block, punch her, punch her." And I'm like, "Oh my lord, I've got to do the technique because I was petrified." But then, as he was saying, you mm-hmm. know, when you're on the street, yeah, no one's gonna be all softly, softly because you're a woman. Exactly. And the only reason why I really wanted to do this self defense was because I thought. If I'm gonna have MS and I'm out with my children, what if someone attacks me? And not only is my body part shutting down, I don't even know how to defend myself or look after my children. So I just wanted to learn something really quick Mm -hmm. that was gonna just give me a quick technique that I could, you know, even if I can't run fast, I can just get rid of the person Mm. and have my children and know that they're safe. And that's what, that's where that helped. And so just doing the Mutu and the Urban Krav Maga, it just sort of pulled everything together. Yeah. And like I said, at the end of it all, I'm grateful to my husband, grateful to my trainer, mm-hmm. grateful to the Mutu sister. You know, it's like, and I just thought, it's like God just directed me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because all of these things, I've always wanted to lose weight. And I've never done it. Mm-hmm. And I've never had the willpower mm-hmm. to eat healthy. Mm. And then all of a sudden, my body is totally, everything that I normally take for granted is taken away mm. from me and I have to pause now because there's nothing else I can do. I can't run, mm-hmm. I can't escape from it. I can't run from this body that's you know, Trapped disabled it, from the neck down. Tra- yeah, I can't do anything. Yeah. So yeah, you know, th- and reading the statement from um, my neurologist, he said, because of the amount of lesions on my spine and on my brain mm-hmm. that I'm, he knows you know, that I'm prone to high risk and having lots of relapses. And you know, within those three months, I had so many relapses. So my outlook wasn't bright. Mm. And so to keep having the relapses and then to be at a stage now where, you know, I, I was telling you, sis, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I received a letter from the neurologist. Um, it was early this year. And they said they're gonna discharge me mm-hmm. from the clinic. So imagine, I should have been happy, everybody, but I was like, what? (laughs) I phoned up the neurologist secretary. I said, how dare you discharge me? What if something happens? You know, I I was just so shocked. Like, how did? And then the second letter came from the incontinence clinic saying, you know, there's nothing wrong. Should you need us in the near future, go through your GP for a referral. And everybody, I should have been happy. Mm. But all I could think was, my God, what if I, and then I paused. And I said to the woman, I was like, I'm ever so sorry. And I hung up <laughs> and I started jumping around the house. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I remember just updating my um, Facebook status because I couldn't believe it. Everybody on Facebook had been through my journey with me. Mm-hmm. And at this point, you know, I should have just been like, yes, they don't want to see me anymore. But you know, the first thing that was like, what? You know, they told me not to get happy. And that, you know, now they're telling me they don't, they don't want me on their books. So I was like, this is ridiculous. Keep me on the books, you know? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was even saying to my sister recently that I always park in the disabled bay. Why? You know, it's like, it came so automatic. Oh, disabled. And then it was like parking the, the big broad child bay because you know, oh, you need to open the door wide to come out. And it only hit me recently. I was like, why? You know, like you don't need to do this anymore. So. It's so strange how you know you can accept something mm. and just keep doing stuff mm. constantly without realizing that change has come. Mm. And I didn't realize, you know, that it was wasn't until they actually sent me the letter mm. to say that confirmation you, you've yeah. been taken off. And especially coming from them because they weren't even exactly. expecting. Mm. This because every time recovery. I went, you know, every time I'd say, "Oh, this is something that's positive," mm-hmm. they'd be saying, "Well, don't get too happy because," and I just thought. 
day that I got a point because everybody I'd spoken to had mm. you know one minute they're saying to me oh you know oh, I'm feeling so much better this month mm -hmm. and I'll see them the following month and they're blind you wow. know so just experiencing those different things I really value being able to see and just Trust. being able to do things mm -hmm. and that's why I really challenged myself with the self-defense now I, I make sure I exercise every day mm -hmm. I mean the, the exercises that I do it's only 15 minutes anyway which is why wow. anyone who knows me as well will know that I'm not a fan of exercise I'm pretty normally Same a pretty a lazy <laughs> person so <laughs> if you tell me to do something for an hour every day it's gonna be like oh no let me just get my loud music boom 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 and then I'll do it but it, it, was a, it was a struggle for me. But when I found this and it was like 15 minutes, I was like, Psh, I could do 15 minutes, like easily. And like I say, the only reason why I stuck with it is because I lost everything, yeah. lost everything. And when you lose everything, you value everything, everything yes. when you get it back. Mm -hmm. So for me, there's no going back to not exercising again. And if I can't do all the exercises, I make sure I do a bit of walking for 30 minutes, mm. whatever it is. Mm. And, you know, just changing my diet, really. Yeah. You know, there's so many things that, or the so-called what I class with naughty food that I used to think, oh, I can't imagine not eating it anymore. But it's not that you don't have to eat anymore, but just restrict your portions yeah. and don't have it every day. If you want to have something that's naughty, that I class with really naughty food, like fried dumplings, absolutely love them. But I'm not going to have it every day. Yeah, you and I'm not going to be eating it's, six it's of them every day, isn't it? Yeah, you know, like just be moderate in in what you do. You know, you should enjoy life. Like like I say, like now I'm so happy, and I, I just feel grateful for mm -hmm. everything. But I'm not going to, you know, like be so restricted that I'm like, oh, I'm only going to eat spinach forever. <laughs> you know, it's like I want to be happy, mm -hmm. but I want my body to be strong, and yeah. I want to see my children grow, mm -hmm. and I want to, if I'm living, mm -hmm. I want to be healthy. I don't Absolutely. want to be living with ailments and just accept it. You know, I don't want to be like, oh yeah, you know, it's this I've got high blood pressure, yeah, yeah. but it's normal. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. I don't want to accept that as part of my mm -hmm. life. So the only way I can change that is by making that first change within myself. Okay, what we're going to do? We're going to have a quick break, and then when you come back, we're going to just really just talk about what life is like for you today. I'm going to play a track that you asked for, um, Bob Marley, Conquering, oh. Conquering Life. Yeah. So, so what does this song mean to you, sis? Um, this song actually reminds me a lot of my gran. Okay, um, yeah, our gran. She used to Lovely sing gran. this yeah. song um, mm. quite a few times. And it really just, like when I hear it now, it just mm -hmm. reminds me of her. And she was such a strong person. I knew if gran was alive, you know what gran's like, sis. If gran mm -hmm. was alive, mm -hmm. when I had MS, the mm. first thing she would have said to me, you are healed. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't have batted an eyelid she wouldn't just say to me like you know oh no she wouldn't have been just crying you know she'd have been like let's pray and she would have been like you know you're healed mm -hmm. and I would have had that backbone that fire in me and you know she was just thinking of what she'd be like really encouraged me so this song definitely reminds me of my gran being okay. a very strong woman right okay and here's a song
Okay, um, we are back. And um, yes, Jeanette, um, Jeanette's story is um, very powerful, very emotional. But um, as you can hear, she's here and um, her life is totally different to what it, what it was back then two years ago. So Jeanette, just share with the people how, you know, how, what, how different things are for you, just in terms of, you know, mobility and your health and, you know, how things are, what's, what's, you know, what's a normal day in the life of Jeanette today? Okay, so normal day for me is probably waking up either just before six or dead on six o'clock. Um, and again, from Mutu system, uh, Wendy Powell, she writes lots of blogs, but she said to try um, taking honey, honey in the morning, one teaspoon. So every morning I take one teaspoon, not of cheap honey, not that squeezy, whatever, I'm talking proper honey. So I spend like either 8 99 or I can't remember, it's quite expensive, on Manuka honey. And that's in place of sugar and yeah. things like that. Okay. So mm -hmm. I take one teaspoon of that every morning, first thing, and I'll probably have like ginger tea or something like that. Um, and I tend to be rushing around because I've still got children, so I'm rushing doing the school run and what have you. But like, you know, before I couldn't even dream of doing things as normal. Mm. So, you know, this is, this, my life now is just, I'm back on track, but much better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, being able to go to work is an absolute blessing, really. Mm -hmm. um, because the way I used to feel really tired, uh, I, you know, I can't explain it, but mm. that's where the honey mm. totally balances it out for mm. me. So like, even if I have, uh, very little sleep because I'm still I'm actually studying at the moment um, oh right do you want to share <laughs> do you want to share about I'm you? studying this is where she is now um, working yeah. studying um, two children my our brother as you say my oh, brother yes <laughs> our brother Carl Foster Carl Foster um, wrote a oh. book called Self Made and um, when this Jeez, when this yeah. book uh, came out I was like I was saying to him yeah yeah yeah, yeah I'm going to buy it straight away so as soon as it was released I remember um, ordering it from Amazon, I think, and then it took like it took me longer to get it. So I was like, "Oh, I should have just gone to Waterstones." I think it was mm -hmm. that it had it in the first place, <laughs> but it came. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was growing up, I always, I've always loved maths, loved maths so much, but I'm yeah. not good at it. So tell the story <laughs> of you know you being yeah. you know you're, when so you were seven and exactly. Yeah. So I, I've never been great or excellent or somebody you'd say analytical um, but I've always loved maths and so when my brother's book came out um, called Self Made I was like mm, reading it and I came across um, where is it I came across a chapter in there uh, called uh, the conscious and the subconscious mind mm -hmm. but the one that really hit me was in in the book it's called the art of creative visualization yes and it said, whatever you visualize repeatedly will materialize into your reality. Focus only on the positive and improving the quality of your life. And I thought, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm reading it and I'm saying it's all positive and, you know, it's, it's great. But the one that hits me, and I, I actually look at this every day, I've, I have written it in my phone, in my notebook. And every day I read it, it says, successful people visualize themselves being successful before they've actually achieved it. Wow. Now, when I was seven, my I had a godmother, she's passed away now, mm -hmm. but she worked for the Bank of England. And I was always so impressed by, ooh, she works for the Bank of England. <laughs> and at seven, I was like, I said to my mum, dad and gran, you wouldn't know sis. No, but no, I, I said to them, I, was, <laughs> I said I was, to them. I was growing up and gone by then. <laughs> I said, I want to work in a bank. And my mum, you know, like, she was like, oh, that's nice. You know, she was thinking, oh, nice bank job, yes, you know. And, um, I remember I told the teacher at school, mm. not my maths teacher, but my form teacher, mm -hmm. and she looked at me and she said, ha! she said, Jeanette, if it was for effort, 100% yes, so, but skills wise, no, 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 you don't stand a chance. So I was like, what? So I was like, all right, maybe I'm not great, but I love this subject. It is like, for me, it was uh, maths, English, and music, and drama. Those are my favorite subjects. But I knew I wasn't the best at maths. But, you know, I wasn't rubbish, but I wasn't the best. So she kept telling me that I wasn't analytical. But then, um, in the third year of school, 
So when I chose my options, a mm-hmm. uh, black um, teacher came in, his name, if he's listening, <laughs> Nigel Boyd, he came and he was our maths teacher. And he started doing um, the after school maths club. Now my mum is strict. Our now, mum is very strict. I said to my mum, <laughs> if, if I said to my mum when I was younger, oh, uh, mum, can I go to the library? She's like, what? Go to the library? Your mum? Library? Which mum you going to see? <laughs> so she was really strict. So I was petrified to tell her that there was this after school maths club. So I spoke to the, um, I spoke to the maths teacher and he was giving out the letters for it. And our school was actually next door to where we lived. So it wasn't really too bad, but my mum was strict. So I said to my mum, mum, this after school maths is only up until, I can't remember, it must have been like up until the September or something. So my mum was like, hmm, no think about it. But I could just, <laughs> I just knew. For me, I was like, I know she's going to say no. And then she came back and said, yes, you can go, but any, oh, past the hour. <laughs> and I just thought, if anyhow, four o'clock come and I am not at that door, I don't want to turn up at home. So, you know, I was petrified, but I really, really wanted to try and go because the math teacher, he was so good. And I think as well, because he was black, I could relate to him. And on top of that, I think he could relate to the fact that I had a passion for the numbers, but I just didn't, I didn't understand the rules of maths. I didn't understand, I didn't get that there was a rule to each of them. I just thought, how do these people know? How do these people know? But he taught me the rule. And I remember after we did that, we had to pick our, we picked our options, mm. but they sent us to the careers office. And I remember I applied for, um, uh, what was it? Coots and Co. and Nat West Bank. Okay. And yeah, yeah. I remember the interview, the letter Just came when I turned 15, the letter came for the interview. And I remember Gran, my Gran, she was like, praise God. And she was like, you get interviewed, jump, jump, I come. And I was like, wow. That's, that's her grand. You know, my, my Gran was grand. so yeah. excited for me. And she was like, you're going to pray, you're going to get this job. And I was just thinking, uh, will I get the GCSE results that I'm supposed to get? Like, oh my, you know, I was like, oh no. But my Gran, her faith was so strong. She was like, you're going to get it, Gigi. Gigi, you're going to get it. And I was just like, wow. And she actually came with me to the interview. And when I got the job, I couldn't believe it. The letter came, but I was 15. I didn't turn 16 until the July, but school finished in May, I think it was. So I did my exams, but I'd, I'd got the letter back saying, I got the job. I went straight to the form teacher. I said, look, look, look. And she couldn't <laughs> believe it. And when she looked at the salary that they offered, she said, you're gonna be earning more than me? Wow. That was the first time that I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Cause I thought, shame on you, shame on you. You told me that I wasn't good enough and I'm gonna be earning more than you at 16 and I'm gonna work in a bank. So yeah, it was like. So let me just interject here. There's moral of this story, um, people. <laughs> You know, if you've got your children and they want to do things, you know, encourage them and, you know, let them, because from the age of one to seven, children are building, you know, they, they, they've got this um, brain that is taking everything in. So if somebody like a teacher says, you know, you can't, you believe that. Yeah. So you were really good to override that, yeah. sis. I, but that's all I could see, though, sis. I didn't imagine doing anything else. <laughs> that but was you, the thing. You I didn't, saw that on the inside. Yeah, I didn't really... Yeah. There wasn't anything else mm-hmm. that, that I'd thought, oh, I want to do. Mm-hmm. That's all I could say. I was like, oh, I want to work for a bank. But I didn't really think about um, doing anything else. So, so you were using creative visualization without, without, knowing. without even knowing yeah. it. Wow. Totally. Totally. So, okay. So now what else is going on? Um, gosh, because I mean, life is just normal now. I mean, normal, but obviously just um, pain-free. Mm-hmm. Uh, not going for, I mean, it's so, it's such a relief not to feel the fatigue mm-hmm. of MS. Mm-hmm. It's such a relief um, to have actually control over my body because, you know, the fact when you have MS, you have no control of your muscles. So that, you know, it's very hard to know that not being able to control your eye, like, mm. how can you not be able to control your eyes? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, yeah, yeah. I can't even, exp- I can't even. When I'm thinking about it now, I almost feel like I'm talking about somebody else because mm-hmm. it seems so far from mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And I want it to stay so far from me that when I'm looking, it's almost like as if I'm mm-hmm. 
you know, I'm channeling in and thinking, what was it like? Because it, it was the worst time of my life. And then to be here now, on the other side of it, where I can say to people, I don't have MS pain. I don't have MS fatigue. I don't have my nervous system where my eyes are just wandering or twitching or you know my body just shaking and twitching you know it's it's so hard you know when I'm around people and I see them suffering from MS and I think to myself that was me that's how you know I look back and I think that was me and you know I wasn't um I wasn't happy in with MS whereas I've I've met people who you still see them smiling you know they still take so the positive and I, I wasn't at that place like I really wasn't at that place for me it was like if I can't get out of this predicament with MS I don't want to be here so in a way your non-acceptance of it made you you know made you sort of deny it it's like I'm not I'm not accepting this I'm not I'm not going to carry this I'm going to I yeah, have to because it's either I have to go over this I have to get better that do you remember that day when um, I sent you that email saying to you sis I'm healed do you remember you was trying to tell me about green <laughs> juice was it yeah, green, green juice or something juice, you yeah, were trying you know to tell me, me. do you remember yeah. that yeah. yeah so it was like I started because I'd seen that I was recovering mm -hmm. able to do the Mutu exercises able to do self defence mm -hmm. able to go swimming mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. you know able to go to the gym participate start walking places mm -hmm. you know like sometimes me and my daughter we can walk up to like my son's nursery I couldn't even imagine doing that before, okay, yeah. you know, so it's, the doors have been open now and I just, I want to live my life in gratitude mm -hmm. and just live it to the fullest, you know, just living right and just consciously and just being aware mm -hmm. that every part of my body is a complete blessing to me and that that's Absolutely. really how I feel, you know, yeah. th there's so many things where I'd be speaking negative before like oh I don't like this I don't like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but now I, it's not that I don't like I appreciate it and if it needs changing it's going to change yeah. so know, it's about so, so your message there would be to appreciate your health appreciate everything about definitely. you definitely you know don't say I don't like this part of my body definitely because when it's not working you know definitely yeah. I've, I've actually got a Facebook um, s uh, quote that I use because I realized that I was one of those people mm -hmm. that, you know, I hate this about me, I hate that about mm -hmm. me. And then yeah. look, when everything was taken away, I, the, you know, all I was saying was, just give me what I had. The, yeah. You know, I don't need to be any better, just give me what I had. <laughs> <laughs> my, my status, that I have a, like a backdrop quote, and mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever change it. Can it, you read that out, it says, stop hating yourself for everything you aren't. Start loving yourself for everything that you are. Wow. And Read that again, please, sis. So stop hating yourself for everything you aren't. Start loving yourself for everything that you are. Wow. And that's how I feel about myself now, mm -hmm. about if you've got limitations, you know, there's physio. If you've got, like, I had my arm, my left arm always was locking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just doing simple exercises, totally unlocked it yeah. till now, you know, I can... Can you see? I'm actually holding my hand up. <laughs> I've never been able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so what? Um, when you have MS, mm -hmm. it leaves scars. So it's like, so when my left side went, what the damage that was left on my arm was totally, um, it would just lock. So I, I couldn't like raise it up here. Mm -hmm. But you know, obviously the pain was gone. Mm -hmm. So it would, you know, they would say to me, so you've got scars from it. So we can do exercises to help you um, be able to unlock it and to ease the pain. But it's that it will go back or be, but you just be left with scars. And the time you have a relapse, you get different scars, and, you know, tissue that would be damaged, and you just move on. So to see that state where none of that locking, mm. you know, hands can actually be, you know, so I can go in that same emotion because I could before. And they explained to me that, you know, okay, you're out of relapse, and now you can move your arm, but you can't do this, you know, that's yeah. just my limitation. Yeah. But I didn't accept that was mm -hmm. my limitation. You know, I saw the exercises on YouTube, I saw, you know, just like, I can do, I'm doing some stretches, mm. doing certain stretches. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you next. Um, how has, you know, exercise and eating impacted your life and family? You know, what's, you well, know? We're, we're all into the whole um, exercise, especially my mm -hmm. husband. He's, he's always been into mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. exercise and self-defense. He trains, like, every day, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's a life. I start my mum, you know, it's a part of this. None of to be sitting and mm -hmm. and it's still that show up to yourself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like I say, and it teaches you that 15 minutes are not worth 15 minutes. I am worth 15 minutes. 
so of just doing whether it be stretches mm -hmm. or of intense exercise 15 minutes out of my day is nothing so you advocate doing 15 minutes a day of exercise yeah. say five six times a day yeah. you you yeah. don't you don't need to do an hour mm -hmm. or two hours of exercise so that can be quite daunting for people that's yeah. what I'm saying yeah. see someone like me mm. I didn't like the whole try and get sweaty and sometimes <laughs> I would do exercise when I couldn't sweat mm -hmm. and I would be thinking but I feel out of breath but you're not I'm not sweating yeah. you know and it's like what whereas I do these 15 minutes they are intense mm -hmm. but I see the results mm -hmm. whereas I was doing exercise before and I didn't see any results so it, you know it's, it's just so strange that like I say it's like God just directed me into this everything that I needed to do mm. the path was there mm -hmm. and all the times before i'd be sort of like yeah i want to do this i want to do it but i didn't actually go searching for it so yeah. like i always say what gran always used to say to me you know seek and you shall find mm -hmm. you know knock and the door will be opened mm -hmm. and before i used to just sit and say yeah i would like to do that mm -hmm. but i wasn't actually seeking anything out i'd be like yeah it'd be good to do that whereas this time i was in such a bad place that i seeked it out and i was like i found it you know mm -hmm. so it was it was like everything was just there in front of me to help me and it was up to me to take up the challenge and actually do because so many times things come to you but you know if your mind is still saying you know you're still in the same place like yeah. oh it's not going to work yeah. i can't be bothered then you won't do it mm -hmm. so in my mind i had like i said very tiny faith mustard seed faith mm -hmm. and i just thought give it a try and that, wow. that's what i did i gave it a try and in the back of my mind i was like this just seems too good to be true mm. i didn't think it was going to work but when I saw little bits of results, I was like, oh, maybe I should keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw, you know, literally 100% result, I was like, I've got to keep going. And if something works, it doesn't mean now that I've lost a lot of weight or mm -hmm. my health has been restored, that mm -hmm. I'm going to stop doing it. Because that's another thing that I'll say. What I found was with multiple sclerosis, uh, there was a couple of days where I thought, yeah, right, I'm, I'm fine now. I don't mm -hmm. need to exercise anymore. So I stopped. What do you think happened? Ooh. What do you think happened? Started to see. I felt relax. pain, mm -hmm. pain in my back, all the way from like the bottom, all the way up to my neck, and I was like, "So this means I can't stop doing the exercise." The way of life. So you know, like because I've had years of being lazy, mm. so to change my mind, mm. it's, it's not. It's not, not like it's it not isn't. something that's yeah. going to happen overnight. Yeah. And I think that's why I say you've got to create a new habit now. Exactly. That's got and to, the reason yeah. why the Mutu system thing worked for me is because she said eat real food she didn't say stop eating what you're used to she didn't mm. say you can't if you like chicken so or salmon pressure was put on but it was food. like yeah. just don't get all this packaged food don't go out and buy junk food mm -hmm. cook your own food so you know what's, what's in, it. in it and mm -hmm. so it wasn't too hard for me to do right, right. so you know it wasn't like oh I can't do this because I cook for myself anyway but it was now just thinking don't mm -hmm. you know use don't certain overdo. things yeah. and you know right. to use coconut oil which is one of the major things yeah, can you explain about it because I don't know if a lot of people know that coconut oil is a good oil to cook with it's fantastic than, yeah. I mean I think they even say going to cook food it's I think even the dentist I went to my dentist and mm -hmm. he was saying that it's so good for your gums and your teeth I was like what absolutely, absolutely. I think it even stops they say like you know it, it like stops certain illnesses it's mm. supposed to be really yeah, good it's but very, very good. I mean like I said I literally I really wanted my health restored mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I followed the Mutu system down to the last mm -hmm. T. Mm -hmm. but when I realized yeah I'm healthy I thought two days I was like too. right I'll take a day off and I must have took like two about two days off mm -hmm. And I just felt this pain in my back. I was like, whoa, where did that come from? And then I realized, you know, it works. Mm -hmm. So don't stop and revert back to where you were to end up with the same results. If you want something different, mm -hmm. you've do got to something. do something Absolutely. different. So, Absolutely. you know, it, it, it wasn't easy. I'm mm -hmm. not going to say to anybody, you know, giving up certain foods or just moderating your portions. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, you portions know, are very portions play yeah. a big role. I think mm -hmm. most, people, I think a lot of times we know, mm -hmm. but when you're so used to doing something, mm -hmm. why do you want to change? When you enjoy, you know, I enjoyed eating bad food. Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily feel good afterwards, mm -hmm. but at the time I'd be like, yes, this is so tasty. And then afterwards I'd be like, mm, maybe I shouldn't do that again. And then next week doing exactly the same thing, you know, eating the same bad food. Mm -hmm. So this totally, changed my life and you know it made me say like you know to my daughter to my husband oh we've got to change you mm -hmm. know um so it was a family thing yeah even just like you. um yeah. chocolate we used to love milk chocolate now we only buy dark chocolate mm, yeah because that's better for you so you can that's have healthy, like one yeah. square exactly every other day yeah. but not like let me eat milk. we used to love milk chocolate mm. like my husband 
he used to love it, but now I'm like, you're only having dark chocolate. It's not addictive because it's good. But it's tasty. We buy that lint one. It's like 80% chocolate. So it's, you know, it it's not going to damage you. But if you're going to be eating a whole bar with all the E numbers and, you know, it's just, but I didn't, you know, things like that. I didn't really think about. I just thought it's a treat. You know, it's life. You know, we give up all these things. What's wrong with having chocolate or you know cake or whatever? But you learn. You know, mm. it's like now I've just learnt so many things. So I just I just appreciate life. And I think you know anyone who's got MS, you will know that fatigue is one of the worst things alongside the pain, but the constant tiredness. Mm. So when Wendy said to have the manuka honey one teaspoon every morning and I tried so it you have that I couldn't believe it yeah. I couldn't yeah. believe that something like that would actually work and number one I hate honey so <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a quite a shock to actually first wow. get that teaspoon and be like because so I'm not so that goes in your your tea yeah, I don't maybe. really use it like that. I just take okay. it in the morning I just take oh, one just teaspoon oh, wow. and put it on my tongue okay. and just go <laughs> but I don't like it so you know like I say I've changed because it works I didn't like the fact that I was always tired, mm-hmm. you know, and where I'm studying as well now. Sometimes I'll stay up later because I'll put the children to bed right. and then I need to stay awake later on to just be able to, you know, finish doing my studies mm-hmm. and everything like that. So then from there, I need that energy. So I have one teaspoon in the morning and one teaspoon at night. And then in the morning when I wake up, even if I've only had four hours sleep, I'm full of light. Do wow. I look tired? No, so that she's <laughs> more awake than all of us. Um, but it does work. What we want to do is just do some big ups. Some pe- people are ringing in, and they want to, you know, just come and share. So we've got, um, ah, we've got uh, Natty Dread. Big up to you, Errol Watson, Claude Iron Lion, um, Anne Marie James, and Julie Julie Mac. Um, ah, Diane is loving the show, and um, she loves she loves the guests. She Aww. thinks you're you're awesome. Thank you. We've also got we've also got um, Juna J- Jamjo and Lele and Sean Goody as well. Thank so you. these are everyone. This is, you know they're really rooting for you for this. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate you all. So sis, what would you say to anybody out there who's got any challenges with their health, whether it's MS or something else, and they're sick? You know they've got the doctor's appointments. They're being told to take medication and. You know they're not maybe they're feeling a bit like you were things were get, are getting getting worse for them rather than better and what would you say to them anyone who might or anyone who knows anybody who's in a situation um oh, i'd say i mean obviously because i've been there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. people do try you like people try and speak positive to you but when you're in such yeah. a situation yeah. it, you know it's like it's almost like as if when somebody dies mm-hmm. and someone tries to console you, yeah, so they're saying, yeah. don't worry, but you are worrying, mm-hmm. you know, and when you're in pain, it, it is very hard. But, you know, what I will say is that, um, what, what I've realised is that no matter what you go through, mm-hmm. you are a strong person. The fact that you're still here, yeah. it shows how strong you are because I really didn't think that I'd be able to be on a show like this Mm -hmm. and say to anybody that I'm here on the other side Mm -hmm. of multiple sclerosis and um, I think you just need to I I think you just need to appreciate yourself and try there's people that I've met that actually have multiple sclerosis and they are happy within themselves and I think that's important and I think if that's what I could have changed or the advice I would have given to myself at that time I would have given myself the advice to be happy regardless because I was still alive, I was still breathing, I could still see and I I literally had to push myself. I had to, um, there's a saying or like there's like the acronym PUSH and it's pray until something happens and I sort of started to believe that and I know if my gran was alive, as I was saying to you sis, Mm -hmm. um, just yesterday Mm -hmm. I was saying if gran was alive, I know she would have been saying to me, pray until something happens and also do, you know, not, not just like, when I read up on certain things, mm-hmm. so like the Mutu system, I knew I was really tired. There was something there. I could have just said, I'm not gonna try, but I tried. And I, I think the important thing is not to give up because I was ready to Definitely, give up. Yeah. And yeah. my husband was so positive 
but I was ready to give up. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think, you know, when you're in the worst place, it's so easy to just think, right, I'm not happy, mm-hmm. I wanna give up. Mm-hmm. But I think, don't give up, just push, really push your way through. Just try and, try and speak life mm-hmm, into mm-hmm. your life. Because uh, as I said to you, sis, when you sent me that email trying to tell me about um, hell, I can't remember oh, what yeah, it was. I, think I was. I was talking about my beloved green juice. Green and juice blah, blah, blah. and something. Yeah, I know yeah. you was try. I know you was trying to encourage me, but I at that point yeah. I was like, you know what? And I know a lot of people thought she's crazy because they could still see that, that my refused, left side was weak. But I started to, that, to yeah. speak life mm-hmm. in my life, mm-hmm. and every day, and I still do this now. Every day, I write in my phone a text message to myself. Yeah, that was and, amazing um, when you tell me that. That's <laughs> fantastic. Literally. Um, because, yet again, when me and Carlos, our brother, we were talking and mm-hmm. he wrote his self-made book, but before that, mm-hmm. we read The Secret, which is literally ask, believe, and receive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It said in there to write, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so happy and so grateful for whatever it is. Mm. And every day, I would pray and I'd be like, thank you, God, for my healing. And if somebody asked me about MS, I'd be like, I'm healed. And I know they're looking at me like, you are not, yeah. you are mm. not healed. Can you not see you that not you're less like You dead? refuse to own it. But I, yeah. s- I realized, I was like, speak the word over your life. Mm-hmm. And I just had to speak life mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. my life. And that is how I live my life now. Mm-hmm. Whatever I find that I, you know, cause you still, everything that you do, there's certain things that you might find that is difficult or a challenge. Mm-hmm. And I always say, I can do this. Others have gone on before and they have done it, so there's nothing wrong with me. I might just have to find a different way of learning mm-hmm. or a different way of adapting mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. be able to do this mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, you know, using the um, Mutu system, it taught me how to do the press-ups and the mm-hmm. squats properly, mm-hmm. but at such a slow pace. Whereas if I'd gone to a class when I was able-bodied, I probably would have tried it and, and just given up. Given but up. this was yeah. at a beginner's pace that if somebody who could do all these exercises looked at it, they'd be mm-hmm. like, what rubbish is this? You know, like, that, that easy level, wh- why do you need to do that? But that's where I needed to that's be. That's where you needed to be. And that, you know, yeah. that's how, that literally put life back into me. So you would say to anybody out there who's going through anything, even, it might not even be a health thing, it might just be something where they just feel, I've just, I've, you know, exactly. I've got no control. I've exactly. Got, you know, and you would say to them, start speaking positive speaking what you want it to become speak it into existence and start seeing literally it as well yeah you know like honestly i i write everything down so mm-hmm. before i got the job that i'm in now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i remember on the way on the train i actually wrote thank you thank you thank you and i wrote i am so happy mm-hmm. and so grateful for my new job mm-hmm. then i wrote I thank see. you thank you thank you you have to see the outcome and I saw myself and I remember actually saying I I sat on the train and I looked out and I thought I can see myself here Mm -hmm. and I I visualised myself in that job doing what needed to be done but the job required here we go again a maths 2-1 degree which I don't have everybody but I got it you got the job so I saw myself I prayed on it and I knew that those words mm. ask believe and receive ask and it shall be given but you've got to believe i couldn't yeah, come the with the doubt it's very important very i couldn't important. doubt at that point i really needed this job yeah. it wasn't like you know maybe mm-hmm. or it doesn't really matter i needed mm-hmm. it so badly mm-hmm. and i was like i've got to get it yeah. so regardless i'd actually applied for this job three times and they said because i don't have the two one degree mm-hmm. in maths i was rejected and then the company direct came to me wow and asked me to come to the interview. And when I got to the interview, what do you think happened? They asked two maths questions that I did not know, and they still gave me the job. So I know. Once you plant that seed, mm. I'm telling you, I stop. know. Yeah, what, and what is yours? I had, to, you know, I had to share that because it's not just the fact that I had MS, and I disclosed that in the interview. I said, look, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had to learn to do things again. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not like I'm coming here and I'm saying, I've got this 2-1 degree. I didn't lie. I didn't do anything. Just like, I just went, as went in as yeah. myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I knew I needed this job. I knew I wanted this job. And I saw myself mm-hmm. in that job. Mm-hmm. Even when I sat in the chair for the interview, I looked around and I thought, I see myself here working. Mm-hmm. And I spoke life into what I wanted. And when it came through, believe me, 
I spoke to the man on the phone and when he said, you have the role. A lot of noise, I can imagine. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, it, I know that you can have positivity mm -hmm. regardless of circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, I, I think if I could leave anything with anyone, it would be to... I don't even know if I can say that I believed in myself because I really didn't. When, when you lose everything and you lose all feeling in your body mm. and you're left with pain or you're left disabled, I think it, it's, it's so low. It, you feel, I felt worthless, I really did. And I felt so inadequate. But a little glimpse of feeling in my body gave me mustard seed faith. Mm. And I really have to say it was mustard seed faith, but I built on that. Mm. And like I said, I began to visualize seeing myself being healed. Mm -hmm. And the moment I started to speak that, I was getting better. And it, you know, it was a, it was a progressive healing as well. Mm -hmm. So it didn't, it wasn't like I'm not saying to everyone, oh yeah, I woke up and I was just fine. No, it wasn't. It was forward. steps yeah. Yeah. because I made those changes because mm -hmm. I wanted change in my life. I really needed the change. Mm -hmm. It, was, you know, it wasn't like I just wanted, I needed to be able to walk again. I needed to be able to move my arms mm -hmm. again. I needed to see properly again. You know, I wanted to see my children. I wanted to see my husband. I wanted to see my mum. You know, that I, there was just so many things mm -hmm. that I really wanted to do and now I'm doing them. So, you know, don't give up whatever you're going through. For me, whatever I go through, it's God first. And I just, I talk to God like how I talk to my sister. You know, I'm like, Lord, explain to me. Tell me why I'm, I'm going through this. And I pray, and I, I focus, and I realize there must be something in me that I change. You know, whenever you want a change, you've got to, you've got to be willing to change as well. Because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say that it was easy for me to give up eating bad food, and I'm not gonna say that it was easy for me to start exercising, even though it's just 15 minutes a day. It wasn't easy. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to do the journey to forward, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to go it, it. wasn't, it. it really wasn't an easy thing to do, but mm -hmm. I'd hit rock bottom. And you know, when you hit rock bottom, the only way is up. Mm. You can't go any mm. further. You know, I was, the, the, the only other thing that could have happened, I would have died. So I, I'd hit rock bottom. I couldn't have got any further down. And so here I am, upright, standing, mm -hmm. mobile, pain-free. Uh, you know, d anyone out there going through MS, uh, you know, I, I pray for you, I send out all positive energy if all you can remember is to take manuka honey in the morning to get rid of fatigue, try it because trust me, it works. It, the fatigue for me is gone. Believe me, I've had probably like five hours sleep um, yesterday and I'm still wide awake now, just on one teaspoon of manuka honey in the morning. So if you have fatigue, in the, even if whether you have MS or not, try it, it works. Try that now. <laughs> so sis, about health in general, because of we're looking at sort of health in our community and so many people are suffering with all sorts of you know different ailments and even we know in our own family obviously with yourself and other members there's been you know kind of all sorts of um different because we did a show last week with douglas williams and we were talking about how you know certain foods the, the sort of white flour the potatoes all these different things and you know how black people in the community at the moment are, are really, you know, health is such a big, important area for us. You know, what's your thoughts on that in general? Um, oh, I mean, I know it is such a big issue, mm -hmm. but I mean, for me, I, I still like, I still love my West Indian food. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you just cook it, the way we prepare it, I think it's, it's more preparation. about preparation yeah. mm -hmm. rather than saying you can't eat it. So like I was saying to you, I use the coconut oil. Mm -hmm. I know like growing up, we always had um, fried plantain. Mm -hmm. And you know, like when you go into like the restaurants, when you squeeze it, it's like filled with oil. It's just packaging. But like, um, remember mum now, mum just grills it. Yeah. Before all this diabetes and mm -hmm. whatever other ailments and high blood pressure, we were frying, but now, the alternative is to grill and it still tastes lovely yeah. you know and that even at home because i know coconut oil is good i will put some coconut oil in and i'll put the plantain in and it tastes absolutely delicious and also talk about how getting children involved in prepare preparing foods yeah it, i mean as it, well it's definitely worthwhile teaching your children how to cook anyway <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if they you know because obviously 
it's nice for them to get involved, mm. help to prepare. And at the same time, you know, if they like to eat good, healthy food, mm -hmm. teach them how to make it. That would stop them from having to go and buy a takeaway because we all know, you know, you can go out and buy the chicken and chips for mm. one pound oh and it's quick. You know, Poison. fry it, yeah. frying or grilling a plantain mm -hmm. is really quick. If you grill it, you know, you're talking like, I guess, 10 minutes and your plantain's done. But what you know, you're saying so as well is people can just make small changes you don't have to do it's not it's not like eliminate okay. everything because i mean small changes will start making a difference even um uh, what i was doing for uh kayla and isie my daughter and my son mm -hmm. is making um sweet potato chips rather than okay. so just okay. cutting the sweet potato mm -hmm. and then baking it okay just you know that. really i can't just simple nothing because it obviously i want them to be healthy mm -hmm. i don't want for my daughter or my son to grow up and go through what I've what been, through been through, yeah, at all. Yeah. So whatever I can do to try and eliminate that, mm. I will. Mm. You know, and you know, obviously, people go through certain ailments, but it's what you do in that time. Are you still going to continue as normal and be like, I, you know, I've got this ailment, just accept it, and then just eat incorrect, not move? You, you know, know, that's the thing. I think I think people don't always realise how food is so important it is it's know. very important I, and i didn't realize that sugar was such a number one killer i mean oh i always God. thought like yeah. i didn't really think of like mm. i can't explain it it's like well that's the thing most people are not thinking you just find what you're used to yeah what you've been you know you, and up, not yeah. even just that it's the hidden sugars i didn't realize that even sometimes when you're cooking where you would add sugar or i, mm. I didn't even think about it that's what you know i don't mean like oh i didn't think sugar was a baddie mm. kind of thing mm. but i just didn't realize that it's hidden so many times so I didn't think about it so many products so yeah, yeah. so you know like especially within the black community you know we, the, the foods are so tasty mm. but <laughs> you know that it's yeah. true you know like yeah. you can just go like to a wedding or something and you're like my lord you could just stand by the table and just keep eating because oh the food God. is just delicious know. you know yeah. and it's like you just can't stop and the food is in abundance always so it's not like you just have one serving well food is such a big thing in our community it is yeah. you know if you if you have a wedding or you have a birthday mm -hmm. party it's like what food what are you gonna have food yeah certain people you know spend a fortune on yeah all this. i mean remember me always with the caterers oh, all the time yeah. you know and and the cakes i, know. I yeah. mean you know it, it's like you know we do have that diet where yes the food is very tasty but like i say for me now it's a one-off mm -hmm. maybe on my birthday i'll have a tiny portion but when i prepare it myself mm -hmm. it's not all this oil yeah. i'm not going to be putting in no sugar or no mm -hmm. e numbers mm -hmm. but you know i just want healthy food yeah. if i want jerk chicken i will have it but i'm not going to be having like you know the jerk chicken mm -hmm. filled up with all the oil mm -hmm. add some sugar you know you just don't need to do all of that i think you can have the taste without giving yourself that heart attack or that high blood pressure or the cancer That's you know it, yeah. just Medicine's we just it, need yeah. to look at the ingredients that we're adding mm. and really realize that our food is so tasty anyway yeah. cook it prepare it yourself knowing that it's not you just adding all these e-numbers to your food and it's not you know you just distorting mm. yourself because you know it it's like i said to people um i'm eating to live and not to die just for a change, mm, yeah. I've actually changed and I'm starting to eat to live. As well, it's, it's what you say to yourself that is so important. So what's your, what's um, live foods? How much does live food, you know, take on your plate? How much? I have ma majority green, so it's mm -hmm. a lot of vegetables, a little bit of uh, meat or fish. But that's another thing as well, isn't it? Um, we, we used to be sort of very little live foods and more of the, the carbs Remember when we were growing up, it was yeah. like we had the... Whole, like I used to have like a half a plate of rice, yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> I'd have my meat or my fish, yeah. some there'd hard be a tiny food. Salad in the center for everybody. You probably weren't even off. as bad as me. I had all the hard food. I'd be like dashing, coco, yum, everything. <laughs> Just like I'd be like, mum, yes, put it, put on. it on. It's true because mm. I did love my food, mm -hmm. you know. And now I could put the amount of rice, meat, or fish mm. on a saucer. Because I, I'm not overindulging like that. But if you see the size of my salad, uh, I was actually telling um, Kayla mm -hmm. and my husband that when I went to work, it was so funny, mm -hmm. I bought three salads. So you can imagine, I'm sitting down at lunchtime and I bought three boxes of salad. Wow. So I went to the canteen, three boxes, so they're sold up. Mm -hmm. And the woman next to me, she looked like, my God, you are greedy. But I know I don't get full on salad. Mm -hmm. So you can look all you want. And she's looking and looking. 
And then the next day she comes in with the biggest plastic bowl I've ever seen. And she's gone to Tesco and she's bought like the bag of, you know, they got the, the pre-washed spinach, oh, yeah, yeah, lettuce, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and some mixed salad and she's mm. flung it in and then she's bought the hot chicken that they do and she's flung it into wow. this massive bowl. I just looked at her and she goes, oh, you've motivated me. I might as well See? get involved. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, if you see my salads, because they prepare these salads for you. Like you told them I want what you carrot want. Yeah, and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, probably the container is, so, yeah. you know, like a little book size mm -hmm. and it's kind of thin, but her bowl was like, <laughs> it was like, you know, when you get the bacon, when you're baking a cake, mm -hmm. it was, oh, it was yeah, massive. Yeah. So I, I looked at her and she actually ate the lot with the hot chicken that she added in there. So I just thought, wow. And then she looked at me and she goes, you've motivated me. I can learn from you. And I was like, okay. Yesterday she was looking at me like I'm the greediest woman around. And, she's and then today yeah. she's like yeah. gone well yeah. in yeah. with her vegetables. So Yeah, nice yeah. foods. You know, if we want to live, we have to eat them. We I just, re them. what and I realized is, get the children on as well. you don't get bloated. No. That's what I realized. When you eat because the more so vegetables, yeah. you don't get bloated. Whereas before when I used to eat, you know, you feel like, Oh, and you just sit down and be like, I need to sleep, man. You know, you literally you'd lean back and be like, no, just let me find a space, undo my buttons, undo buttons. and just <laughs> sleep because you you've over, you know, you've just eaten so well, much. The digestive system is is like can't even break it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if the food took like the whole week yeah. to pass through the system yeah. because the the portion sizes, you know, yeah. it's just a lot. So big, you know, just slash your portion sizes. I think sizes. we have to be you know moderation mm. everything in moderation mm. including Thank moderation <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't go, go to don't like go too far yeah we don't want to be extreme in anything because that's not sustainable mm. you know, that's why i say i couldn't if if the mutu system was a diet mm -hmm. it would it would not have worked for me because mm. i can't deal with you can't have this you can't have that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know if if i go home and i'm like oh yeah i want a piece of chicken i'll have it i eat when i'm hungry whereas before it's like i'm thinking oh you know cakes are naughty so I would go, this is how bad I was when I was really overweight. I would go with my sister oh my God, this is, to this is, this is the bagel shop. Oh we would God. go to the yeah. bagel shop. They had this lemon cake. We would get two, was it two slices each? I think so. Yeah, and two, then when like she active. drove off, I would go back in and get another two. And sometimes I would do And then the she same. would do the same. <laughs> and none of us knew that we were that greedy to go and do that. But this is <laughs> where we were, people. I know, <laughs> I was in such a bad place. But believe me, if I wanted a slice of that cake, I would have a slice, but I'm not going to eat four mm -mm. and yeah. every day. I because mean, I was going there every day. Yeah. I was like, yes, let me quickly drive down to the bagel shop for the lemon cake. <laughs> and it's like, I'm thinking, is it the same one at the counter serving? And I'm thinking like, if they say anything, I'll be like, oh yes, I had to get in that. Because you <gasps> know the person looking. somebody else as well. It's yeah, not just you know me. they're looking at you like, how can you be eating four slices of cake? But I was in a really bad place. And you know, I, I was even saying to you yesterday, sis, that. I remember watching The Biggest Loser eating rum and raisin oh, ice cream. Yeah. Who yeah. does that? Yeah. Who watches The Biggest Loser and she was eating, eating <laughs> rum and raisin ice cream at the same time? And I was there bawling, saying, my God, I just can't lose the heat. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Meanwhile, mm. rum and raisin ice cream in my hand, I'm sitting there watching these people exercise mm. and watching them saying, I lost five pounds this week. And I'm like, I just can't lose it. You see, I think what it is, we're not thinking it's a learned behavior. You know, like it's a learned behavior to eat these kind of foods. So you know why as well? Because some people, mm -hmm. even like within my experience, like look at um, how when mum had us, she mm -hmm. had six children mm -hmm. and then mum was back to being slim. And I'm thinking I've yeah, had, had that snap, fat body that I was snaps. like, yeah. you don't see mum at no gym. So <laughs> I was just like, what's wrong with me? You know, at the time I only had one child. So I'm thinking, why have I not just, you see, back in those days, you know, food was pure organic. Now it's all synthetic, isn't yeah, it? It's I just, not, you know, I just food. couldn't understand why that card mm -hmm. was for me. Why was that my mm -hmm. portion to be this overweight person? So instead mm -hmm. of me doing something about it, mm -hmm. like my husband would always say, "Just go to the gym." You know, do you want me to help you? And I'd be like, "That's embarrassing. I've got to go into the gym in some nice Adidas. So I've got to buy some big, big size Adidas mm -hmm. to go into the gym for everyone to be looking like, oh, how did you get that big?" <laughs> And you know why I had that feeling? Because I would see people who were overweight and I'd be like, how did you let yourself get that bad? And then it was me. So that's why I say everything is back to gratitude. Mm. Love yourself so that even if somebody else out there mm -hmm. is putting you down, yeah. you're like, I love me. Mm. You know, I can change that. Yeah. Whatever somebody says about you, you know, oh, you're fat. I can change that. Yeah. 
So self-esteem is very, very important. Yeah, because I had none, you know, and Mm -hmm. having MS made it just worse. So not only was I disabled, Mm -hmm. I was fat. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, I I didn't want to see anybody. I don't think I saw anybody apart from my husband, my children, and the neurologist, and the MS nurse. Mm -hmm. You know, self-esteem, you can't buy it. (laughs) <laughs> Let's put no, it that way. Mm, no, mm. you can't buy it. Mm. And um, you know, when you feel good within yourself, mm-hmm. when you have health, you can't buy it. Mm. You know, you can't buy health. Mm. Health is priceless. You know, th- when I think of literally eating vegetables, a bit of protein, mm-hmm. and my life is restored. Doing a bit of exercise, even if I paid somebody to give me whatever liposuction mm-hmm. and then you see the weight come back again mm-hmm. because i'm still, still my mind has not changed still, yeah. you know so you know i just because I, mean, I can't that's, expect, yeah, I can't I mean, that's explain that's what degenerative it. illnesses are they they're lifestyle related mm-hmm. and that's what we don't realize a lot of the, the, the things that people are saying and the doctors will say oh there's nothing you know it just happened but it didn't just happen it happened because of our lifestyle but we are ignorant of that and it's only when you get to a situation like with you that you had to just do something I was forced forced to change I mean mm-hmm. if I didn't change I you know I can't even imagine like the uh, MS neurologist and the, the nurse said you know the wheelchair they had like you know they was asking me what what kind and as for like the walking stick so they actually brought you forward to ask you yeah because you know you need to say what you want like you know because when they were offering me the walking stick I just looked at it and I thought how at my age can I be with a walking stick you know it's like if I'd broken my foot and Mm -hmm. I had the crutches that I could deal with but to know that this was going to be my life I just couldn't accept it you know and I I just thought imagine everyone's going to see me there with this walking stick I just thought no this you know I just couldn't I couldn't that bit pushed Mm -hmm. me to the edge it just like that the catheter bag for me, it was like the pain was bad, but knowing that it was going to go that step further to have catheter bag, mm-hmm. wheelchair, or walking stick, it, it was, you know. So, it, sis, it was too like, much. okay, turn everything around. 2013, you got um, this magazine oh my sharing gosh. an interest in yeah. your story. How did that come about? Can you um, share with us? What yeah. Happened? Uh, Wendy Powell from the Mutu system mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, she actually uh, was really happy with my results, right. and like I'd I'd thanked her. Like mm-hmm. I sent an email saying, you know, thank you so much mm-hmm. for this system, you know, mm-hmm. because it, it's changed my life. Mm-hmm. I, c- I couldn't believe that I could do exercises with so little mobility at the time. So um, yeah, she had the uh, company. Uh, what was it called? Um, Pick me up. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. magazine yeah. yeah they contacted me through the Mutu system they wanted to know like how was I able to do Mutu with MS and did this Mutu system mm-hmm. help me like mm-hmm. to recover and I sat down and I said you know what it really did because I didn't need the catheter bag because I did all the pelvic floor exercises yeah. and my core became really strong so like it teaches you like mm. even how to walk she teaches you how to walk so your posture so the backache that I was having mm-hmm. was really easing up and then just to for, for good measure and I guess like what I really needed as well mm-hmm. I lost three stones on it mm-hmm. um, the tummy was just getting flatter mm-hmm. so I was just I was amazed by the results wow. and so as a thank you really to her I said I'll be so honoured to talk about what Mutu, what you've designed mm-hmm. has done for me. You know, I, w- I was so, gr- I am, I'm still very grateful to her. I can't thank her enough because I just feel like God just put me in the right channels. Mm-hmm. At that time. I w- like all my path was mm-hmm. just guided to everything that I needed to do. Mm-hmm. What, you know, from the Mutu system to the urban crab and guard, everything just fell into place. Mm-hmm. I can't even explain, but mm-hmm. everything. Everything was just all the doors were just opening it just and it just yeah. seemed like you know even like Ignatius was shocked my husband was shocked you know I'm doing Krav Maga I've just you know three I think four months prior mm-hmm. I was diagnosed with MS mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. ill disabled next minute she's fighting with men <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and she's doing exercise now and my status is on Facebook I'd be like yeah I'm going spin class yeah I'm going body pump and you know and it's just like what totally, totally you know my life around. just yeah 
yeah, it's, it's totally different now. So it's, you know, the journey, mm -hmm. I actually have to say the journey's been great. It's well, been we can, great. We can see that. Um, <laughs> I, I appreciate it because mm -hmm. like my life now, I feel, I feel grateful. I feel so grateful. I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to my family. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grateful to my husband who I just, as I, I kept pushing this man away people because I was humiliated embarrassed when I couldn't do anything for myself my husband just covered down he just like locked everything down even though I was not like saying thank you thank you thank you but this man just covered down he just had my and back he's just there for you he, he had my back and, yeah you know and like I guess as well that made the marriage more strong but in my mind I was thinking mm. like you know what's he thinking you know the woman that you love the woman that you know you're with mm -hmm. we've known each other for so long and then she's disabled like you know how do you feel I can't even imagine I can't imagine how he felt <coughs> at the time, at time but yeah. I was torn and I just every time he would come to help I'd feel like no I can't have him see me this way mm -hmm. you know like how is he gonna see me now just as this disabled person who is he gonna be to me now just my carer you know it was mm -hmm. but you know I'm I'm just grateful I'm so I'm grateful for my husband grateful to my children my daughter was like yeah, my what, right what's, hand what's it like with the children now? It's yeah. awesome. You know, I, I'm actually involved. When I was really overweight, we'd be like, my husband would be saying, like, let's take Kayla out to the park to mm -hmm. go beat the ducks or whatever. I'd be like, mm -hmm. no way. Because mm -hmm. I was just, I was a hermit for like 10 years. So yeah. that's why I was just getting bigger and bigger. Because I would just shy away. I would just be like, work, home, work, mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. And we'd have a family function. No, I'm not coming. Yeah. No, I'm not coming. Yeah. Just wouldn't turn up. You know, so now I don't have any problems. If mum says come around, I'm like, yeah, sure, I'm there. The first one there. Yeah. You know, I don't have that self-esteem issue. I don't have the illness issue. I'm just so grateful for everyone who's in my in my life. Mm. You know, like just and people who I've come in contact with. I've only got I one thing I'll always say is that I always try to seek out the good in people. It's beautiful. Even you know that like some people are very assertive and people can take it like the wrong way. Mm. I just see it that that person is assertive. And I say to myself, that's good. You know, like, I find it's it, I find something mm. good in them because I realise that I've been to a very bad place and I'm just grateful. And I don't want to be seen to be just judging people or looking at someone and saying, oh, because I've been to hell. I've been down there mm. at the worst position mm. of my life. So, you know, I'm just so grateful for life. So grateful. Mm. I can't even, you know, I can't even think of anything negative or mm. whatever. Mm. Whatever I see that is the so-called negative, I just find something positive in that and right. turn it around and you know mm -hmm. th that's literally it for me wow so we are coming to the end of the show and um i'm sure you will agree that that was a powerful um story um from my sister jeanette okay um <laughs> yeah so we're coming to the end and um yes i've got these prizes to give out so right People, just give us a second. We're going to come back to you. Just going to play an, what, a song, and then we'll be right back, and we'll sort out this competition. And um, now. 